Under the Carpet is a talk show that explores topics that people find difficult to talk about. In this series, hashtag MeToo, my guests and I share our personal experiences and thoughts from the perspective of a corporate executive, a social worker, a parent and a survivor. My name is Deborah Ting and I'd like to invite you to join me on this journey. What does sexual harassment mean to you? From the earliest time, I think I became aware of it, unfortunately. I mean, I was in a girls' school for 10 years, and it, everyone in secondary school, had it had pretty much happened to everyone in some mm. way, shape, or form. Mm. Um, everything from, you know, the prank calls uh, where um, some unknown stranger would say terrible things, mm -hmm to um, someone commenting on your body, mm -hmm. um, sometimes even a relative who made you feel uncomfortable because your body was changing and developing. And the thing that, that really gets to me now as a mom looking back is just how everyone took it to be something that, that you know, everyone goes through it, it's normal. Um, so it was seen as something that was very normal and it was only when it sort of went over a certain line where, whereby you could do something about it and report it to the police or whatever. Yeah. And even then you had to be very careful, there had to be witnesses, there had to be proof. And it was seen as, as something you just had to put up with because you were female. <laughs> it's strange because it can come very innocuously because, for example, you know, for, for Chinese people, for example, mm -hmm. it's so common that um, every year you do the family visiting mm -hmm. and then someone will comment like, oh, you know, you've grown and you're taller. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the comments are a little bit strange and awkward. Mm -hmm. um, like, oh, wow, your boobs are very big, really. Huh? You know, like, mm -hmm. I had an uncle say that Seriously? to me. And I, you know, it's so strange because the same uncle had picked me up as a child. Yeah. I had sat on his lap and it was fine. And yeah. then years later, and I'm developing into, you know, a teenage girl, a young woman, whatever. Yeah. And he was commenting on my body parts and I had to uh. think, have the rules changed? Is this acceptable? Is it okay if he, because he's my relative and he knew me as a child? I don't know. So mm -hmm. I think for our generation, our parents mm -hmm. weren't necessarily the the most helpful, perhaps through no fault of their own, because yeah. you know yes. um, they were brought up in a different time themselves and perhaps less aware of these things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we we navigated these things and 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 learned in in many ways the hard way. Mm -hmm you know, how to survive, how to stay safe, mm. you know, wh what to do if a date goes bad, what to do if, if a stranger approaches you, which places not to go alone, things like that. And it always seemed as if it was less about empowering females. Mm. It's like it's our responsibility yes, to keep as it was about avoiding, safe. avoiding becoming a victim. And yeah. somehow the first question when something does happen as it, it almost inevitably does at some point. It's like, oh, what didn't you do? Mm. Or, or what did you do that was wrong? Mm. What didn't you do to avoid becoming a victim? Yeah, that's yeah, right. And that's what were question. you worrying? Mm. And why did you um, yeah. invite him on the date? Yeah. Or, you know? or what time was it? Why were you walking alone at that time? Yeah. There are never enough answers to all the questions. Mm. Because at the end of the day, we all, we all know that they don't address the real cause. They don't address the real concern. Mm. Yeah. I just I, I also am curious, right? Mm. You know, the Me Too movement has become such a big thing yes. in the States and, and yep. internationally. Mm. How has it like um, maybe impacted your daughter's generation? Yeah. So um, you've got a teenage daughter. I do. Um, she's fifteen. Uh -huh. Some of the things that, that, that we went through mm -hmm. I don't think they go through. Like like what? All of my friends, including some of the male ones, everyone had the prank caller who called up and, and yeah. did the heavy breathing on the, you know. Our generation, we all went through that, yeah. right? Like somehow there was always some creepo on, on the phone who was calling random numbers. Yeah, yeah. So our kids don't go through that. But then because they don't even pick up the phone and call each they other anymore. They don't pick up the phone, yes. You know, but then of course they get harassment from other sources, from social media. Yeah. Um, and stalking on Instagram, things like that. Mm. Um, with regards to the Me Too movement, I, I remember when I first read about it, the first sense was relief mm. because it was suddenly all those things mm. that, that, that had been that, that we all took for granted were sort that of That we a all normal, had to go through, right? Yes. A and so we called, didn't dare to talk about it. Exactly. And a so-called normal part mm. of growing up, becoming a woman, all that sort of thing, mm. or, or even being a woman because goodness knows it continued. Mm. Um, 
And then here suddenly was this so-called movement that was daring to point out that no, this is not normal. Mm. Um, yes, most of us go through it. That doesn't make it normal. It's still wrong. Or acceptable yeah. or correct. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and of course, it gave me hope as a mom, right? We would really love to hear about your experiences and thoughts. Please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel and also find us on Instagram and Facebook. And more importantly, please share this video with everybody you know. You might actually really help somebody just by doing that.